Work hard and play strong, defend the shield Always for the black and gold We go the extra mile, we never yield Marching to victory we rule Because we are the village school Nice for life, defend the shield We are the knights of the village school, our hearts are fierce and bold. Work hard, play strong, defend the shield, always for the black and gold. We go the extra mile, we never yield, marching to victory we rule, because we are the village school. Knights for life! Good evening, and welcome back to Leading from Illinois. I am your host, Dennis Chapman, and it is my privilege to be with you again this evening. A big shout out to our students who performed the fight song. We debuted the fight song this year. It was written by Mr. Bob Powers. And a uh, big shout out to Mrs. D and Tony Yenshaw and Mrs. Martin. Uh, thank you so much. We needed an intro and I really love that song. I love hearing it and hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, so we are entering week seven of distance learning and working from home. And I'm curious, you know, we, we ask this question of our faculty every Tuesday. We've continued our weekly meetings as a faculty. So I'd like to ask the faculty to tell me how they're feeling in five words or less. So if you would go ahead on, those of you watching on Facebook Live, go ahead and type in there and I will read a few of these out. Uh, I'm just curious how you're feeling going into week seven. Um, I don't know about you, um, I'm a little exhausted, not gonna lie. Uh, it has certainly uh, been quite a journey and more to come the rest of the year. Uh, but you know what, I'm usually tired anyway around this time of year, kind of going into May. So but this certainly feels a lot different than it has before. So um, I, I, I just, uh, I'm curious how you're feeling. So feel free to go ahead and type that in there and uh, look forward to reading some of the responses. I appreciate you joining us uh, again on this broadcast. Um, while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and uh, share a few things with you. Uh, this time of year, we always are preparing for next year. And of course, this is a very unique time in that regard as we think about what next year might look like. Uh, we know that there, are, uh, it may not be business as normal, business as usual. We're very well aware of that. So we're actually planning several scenarios uh, by which we will be planning for next year. So um, I'm looking forward to sharing this information with you going into the summer. I have actually formed two task forces to look at this. Uh, we've got a health and safety task force, and we have an academic uh, task force as well on how we would deliver the program. So really probably three different scenarios. One would be a traditional face-to-face. -face. Second would be perhaps like an A-B type of situation where uh, half of the school would be uh, in class while the other half would be doing distance learning and then it would uh, rotate. Uh, that's one option we're looking at along with others. And then uh, probably option C would be to continue in the environment that we currently are in. But um, if you're paying attention to what the health experts are saying, uh, it certainly looks like we'll be in and out next year in some regard, but uh, Rest assured that the Village School will have a plan uh, and be well executed by our amazing faculty and staff. Um, oh, thank you, uh, Miss Ann Nathan. Shared she's feeling blessed and excited. Yes, I can feel. I feel that. It, I feel that too, for sure, Ann. Um, also, want to share with you too. After much discussion on graduation and promotion, so we've made the decision for eighth and twelfth grade to celebrate them with in-person ceremonies. Now, granted, we don't know. Uh, when we'll be able to pull these off, but we're hope, uh, hoping for this summer. And basically once the church, which is in phase one of the plan to reopen, uh, once they're online and having services, then we'll follow suit with uh, services. So hopefully the ceremonies will happen later this summer. So more information to come uh, when that is available. We'll also live stream those for those that can't attend or aren't comfortable yet attending. And of course, we'll follow social distancing CDC recommendations for those uh, ceremonies. But uh, it was very clear to me that the passion that our, our middle and upper school faculty have around sending these folks to their next journey, the next chapter of their life in an in-person ceremony. So we're, we're committed to making that happen. Uh, this past week, we had three coffee chats. Uh, they were hosted 
by our admission team. And the topic was digital, sorry, digital citizenship and parent resources to assist with distance learning. And our two facilitators for that were Mrs. Landis, our school counselor, and Mrs. St. Amon, our director of teaching and learning. So there was a lower school version, a middle school version, and an upper school version. All three of these are available for you to watch on our website. This coming week, we will continue with our nightly bedtime stories. So those will continue every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30. So just look for the Facebook group. It's a closed group called TVS Nighttime with a K, Time Stories. Um, also this week, you'll have the opportunity to meet Dr. Will Eyerly, who will be serving as our interim head of upper school. Uh, we'll have a time together with him on Zoom on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So you don't wanna miss that. I hope that you're able to join us for that. Also this week, hopefully you saw on the note that went out on Friday, it is TVS Virtual Spirit Week once again. Uh, this uh, week's lineup is as follows. Tomorrow will be your favorite sports team. Tuesday, crazy hair or hat. Uh, Wednesday is mismatch day. Thursday is PJ day. And then Friday, black and gold spirit day. So hopefully you had a chance to tune in last week. If not, uh, all the recordings of these are also on our website under the welcome page and a couple other places too. I think on the COVID page as well. Uh, but I had a great conversation with three members of our, our student body and, and leadership, our lower school, middle school, and upper school. And uh, it was a great, just awesome conversation. And they just did such an amazing job representing our school in, in such, a, such a great way. Um, tonight, it's all about the teachers. And let's talk a little bit about the teachers at the village school. Um, first off, they were given quite the tall order. We basically said, change the way that you deliver your academic program. Oh, and by the way, do that in 24 hours and now do it for the rest of the school year. But in true village school night fashion, they have responded with creativity, dedication, and positivity throughout. I, I seriously could not be more proud of the way each of our teachers has handled themselves during this crisis. And I, I really truly believe that our school will come out even stronger on the other side of this. We've learned uh, new skills and things that we can act, continue to incorporate into um, our program moving forward. Um, and so not all heroes wear capes. Sometimes they Zoom and Google Hangout. And we've got three of those folks with us tonight. So uh, let me first bring in our upper, one of our upper school teachers and I uh, wanted to bring in uh, Mrs. Lauren Redondo onto the program. Hello, Mrs. Redondo, how are you? Hi, Mr. Chapman, I'm great, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Uh, so this is my second year at the Village School and I'm currently an upper school English and French teacher. And I've kind of divided my time. Um, I've got ninth grade and 11th grade English and then I have a mixed level uh, French one class that we're starting to kind of rebuild that that program and and bring the French studies back to the village school. Awesome. Parlez-vous français? Oui, bien sûr. Très bien. <laughs> yeah. That's the extent of what I know. So, uh, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we're so glad to have you on here tonight. We appreciate all that you do, Lauren, for our school. Thank um, you. Absolutely. Uh, our next guest on here um, is not only a teacher at our school, but she's also a parent of two students. And that is Mrs. Rinaldi. Hello, Mrs. Rinaldi. Hi. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about your, yourself and your background? Sure. This is my fourth year at the Village School, um, sixth year as a parent, but fourth as a teacher. And um, this coming year will be my 20th year of teaching elementary school. So Awesome. And I had the pleasure of experiencing Mrs. Rinaldi as a parent last year yeah. for my son, Cooper. And it's such an amazing year, and you um, you, you do definitely exemplify a, the profile of a teacher, Mrs. Romaldi. I'm so glad you joined me tonight for this conversation. And then we have one of the newcomers to the Village School, uh, Ms. Carolina Grau. Hello. Hello. Grau, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Mr. Chapman? I'm doing great. Uh, love having the opportunity to, to spend some time with you. So why don't you tell our, our folks a little bit about yourself? Um, I, this is my first year teaching at Village. This is my 11th year as an educator. And um, I teach English, but I've taught many other subjects in the past. But um, I teach sixth and seventh grade honors um, and uh, college prep English. Yes, and you have a bit of a drama background too. I do, yeah, I love, yes. I love theater. <laughs> Absolutely, so yeah, we 
uh, plug you in wherever we can plug you in because you do such an awesome job and we're glad to have you part of our family. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna try to uh, work some technology here behind the scenes and uh, get the questions going. And so like I mentioned at the outset of this, you know, one of the things we talk about with our um, teachers is just how you're feeling, you know? So let's, uh, let's start with that question. So how are you, you know, this thing has gone on well, much longer than any of us would have ever imagined. And, uh, you know, we're just continuing to uh, kind of push through this. I, I saw a very interesting article over the weekend from um, a friend of mine and colleague, Greg Bamford, and he talked about there's three stages to this as he views it. There is the triage stage, which for us was March, where we had to make some decisions, kind of getting things going and moving. Uh, now, I would say we're in the second phase or second stage of this, which is the adaptation stage. Um, which is more about how we're going to deliver our pedagogical approach to how we're going to deliver the curriculum. And then the third phase, which we're about to embark on, is the resilience phase. So what is this going to look like for May? What is this going to look like for the fall? Um, but, uh, you know, I think that kind of frames out what we're doing. So now that we're kind of in this ad adaptation phase, how are you feeling? How are things going? Um, we'll start this question with Mrs. Rinaldi. Okay. Um, at this time, I'm feeling like I'm making extra sweet extra sweet lemonade out of lemons. Mm -hmm. um, with all the uncertainty that is happening, I truly find daily comfort in my interactions with my students, my families, and Mrs. Honor. Whether it's a Zoom meeting, a seesaw post, a text message, an email, and my favorite, the one-on-one -on -one, um, FaceTime calls is truly what gets me through each day. Absolutely. Yes, we actually, this week, we took a break from tell us how you're doing in five words. And we did a little bit of a uh, Zoom poll. So again, I was trying out some technology there. It was a lot of fun. And one of the questions was, or one of the answers to the response was making lemons or lemonade out of lemons, which uh, we're, we're doing. But you're making very sweet lemonade. I, that's, that's a great answer there. Uh, Ms. Grau, how are, you, how are you feeling? Um, Mr. Chavin, I feel hopeful. I think uh, we're going to return stronger than ever. And I think that this is a good sign of our resiliency and our, um, as a nation, but also as a school, how strong we are, how full of life and um, how we're really just going to not only bounce back, but this is going to make us stronger as a student body, as a faculty. And um, I don't know, I just feel a lot of hope. I agree with that too. I, I think we're not going to just survive, but we're going to thrive. I really do feel that way. And I'm just, uh, and that's because of all of you and your colleagues. It really is the, the amazing work that is done each and every day uh, with our students. So good. I'm, I'm feeling hopeful as well. How about you, Mrs. Redondo? How are you feeling? Um, you know, for a while, it, it, it's interesting that you talked about those three stages, because I think that um, myself and Mr. Redondo for a while, we felt like we were kind of stuck in limbo, not knowing where the school year was going to go. And once the announcement came out that we were going to be closed for the rest of the year, it was almost a sense of relief because we knew that we could now start to adapt and evolve and, and change things um, to get a better sense of consistency. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm certainly sad to, to not be at school, but I, I feel like I'm now able to kind of grasp and adapt and and I feel hopeful for the rest of the year because we now can get into that routine. Um, so I, I'm in a much better place than I think mid-April. Good. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I felt the same way too. Is it was a bit of a sense of relief of knowing. It, I think that's what's been one of the more challenging things with this particular situation is, you know, with a hurricane, you have a general sense of when you're going to come back, right? You, you know, a week or two weeks max, but this really had no definitive end. And we were really trying to figure it out kind of as we go, you know, it's kind of, we're gonna close for two weeks and then it's gonna be another couple of weeks. And then, but to know, okay, this is it. This is what we have to deal with, at least for me too. I'm, I'm with you, Lauren. I, I like that kind of sense of closure and okay, now I know what I'm dealing with. Now I know how to continue to move the school forward. And that did, it was, it was sad certainly, but I think we kind of all knew it was coming. It was just kind of one of those things like, okay, now we know this is how, this is what we're doing and let's make, make it work even better moving forward. So. Um, so we've had some a lot of opportunity to kind of work through distance learning and I talked about that a little bit about it was kind of thrown thrust upon us even though we were prepared for this scenario coming in and Google Classroom and Seesaw definitely were very helpful at the various grade levels but you know how's it going now I mean, how's it going from you know really in a lot of ways 
we're all first year teachers, right? We're all beginners again. It's like we've been thrust into this space that we, uh, it's not our bread and butter. Our bread and butter is being face to face with these kiddos and giving them hugs and, and high fives. And, and, and now here we are trying to con- maintain those uh, connections in a, in a distance environment. So um, I'll start with you, uh, Carolina. Tell us a little bit about how is distance learning going for you? I th- um, distance learning is going well. And there's been setbacks. There's been moments where I didn't give where my, you know, you make mistakes as a person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, you know, there's been mistakes. There's been, there's been a lot of communication, which is so important through all of, all of this. And um, just giving each other that space to sort of learn how to do things. Um, but it is going well. I mean, and I think the reason why it's going well is because my students stepped up to the challenge, mm. you know, and mm-hmm. um, which makes my job so much easier when they really take the bull by the horns and, you know, do what they're supposed to do and do it so well. So um, I feel very blessed and I feel like uh, we're making this lemonade and it's really good lemonade. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we talk about this a lot, right? Failing forward, the first attempt in learning, and uh, we're modeling that. We're modeling that for our students as we're trying new technologies and things that are maybe a little bit new to us as well. Um, but you know, the important thing is remaining, keeping those connections with the kids, and keep the learning going, which which we're doing. What about you, Mrs. Rinaldi? How's it going for you? Um, as a teacher, I have good days and bad days. Um, but the good days far surpass the bad days. And I think the bad days are um, not physically being together with mm-hmm. my students, not um, giving those hugs, those high fives, um, starting the day by hearing their little footsteps and their voices coming down the hallway in the excitement. Um, that um, has been challenging, but I will say that I do feel um that the teachers are all providing a very sound curriculum with mm-hmm. distance learning. Um, I'll spin off from being a parent to, I mean, uh, from being a teacher to a parent, but um, Christian has Mrs. Redondo and Victoria has Mrs. Grau. Um, they are doing an amazing job. They know that their teachers are there for them. They're supplying the curriculum. They know they can reach out to their um, teachers. Um, just, it really has been an amazing experience um, with that aspect of, you know, this is not what education should look like, but the fact that they have, we all have that open communication with our students, with our families, um, has really been a blessing. Well, and you touched on something too, Raquel, as a parent of two village school nights, and we have a lot, you know, fair amount of our teachers have kids at the school. So you're balancing two kids learning at home, and you're also balancing delivering your own curriculum. So uh, kudos to you for, for making that uh, just so seamless, you know, and I know it's, I know it's a lot of work. I, I know it's, I mean, it looks, it's like a duck, right? Like your feet are probably going crazy underneath the water, but you look like you're just gliding along on the, on top of the water, right? It's, it's that hamster <laughs> in the wheel that keeps spinning. <laughs> yeah. You just keep going. But honestly, the upper school and middle school teachers have truly done a remarkable job. They really have. Awesome. So thank yeah. you, Lauren and Carolina. I appreciate you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. What about you, you Lauren? <laughs> yes, they are great. Are great kiddos, that's for sure. Uh, what about you, Lauren? How's it going for you? Um, I, I actually think it's going really well, and I, I can't emphasize enough how blessed we are at the Village School to have been a Google Classroom school for multiple years. Um, to have students who have devices or have access to technology, I'm in a lot of different teacher groups um, on Facebook and on Twitter, and just seeing how difficult it's been for some schools and some families to gain access to curriculum, we really hit the ground running. Um, And I know that the first week, uh, because teachers are perfectionists, we probably all hit the ground a little too hard, Um, but I've been able to really find a good balance of work and curriculum to assign my students on days that we don't have live sessions. Mm. Um, So I consider those to be asynchronous. And I think that the longer we're doing this, the better we're getting at the types of assignments we're giving and the workload we're assigning. And now our kids are in such a great rhythm mm-hmm. with our live sessions that our synchronous scheduling has just improved beyond what I could even believe. Um, the kids are engaged. 
I'm having more fun. Um, you know, there's less pressure than I think when we started the first couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm feeling in a, like I'm in a really good spot right now. That's awesome. You, you touched on a lot of really important things there. I think one of which was some schools, I think they, you know, they took a couple of weeks and then they launched, we went right for it. And uh, part, partly because we were ready. Uh, second, I, you know, we were really committed to not extending the school year. Uh, that was something I thought would be a, even a little bit more uh, kind of demoralizing in a lot of ways, you know, and I, and I think, but with that though, thinking that it was going to be short term, we've, we've really modified and adjusted accordingly. And I, I would really venture to say that both lower school, middle school and upper school, all three uh, have uh, components of synchronous and asynchronous. It's a bit of a hybrid uh, of, of both. Um, while uh, lower school is primarily asynchronous with some live meetings, it's the, it's the opposite in middle and upper. But um, you all continue to uh, really adjust and modify it and make it what's best for kids. I think the more one of the more challenging things of all this too is the amount of screen time that we're now re you know requiring of kids. This is so uh, kind of anti the way that we normally would be operating is we try to you know give kids certain breaks, but this is where we are. Like this is the only way that we can have those connections with them is the face to face. So it's keeping a, a balance of that too. And I know that we're continuing to modify and uh, make that happen, but. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, kudos to the administrative team as well. You know, Ms. St. Amon, Mr. Sweet, Mr. St. Amon, uh, you know, uh, and Mrs. Ames, everybody that's really worked behind the scenes uh, to make that happen. Um, Mrs. Nathan down in preschool, you know, it's, it's delivered the curriculum in this form and fashion. There's nothing that we really had planned for, but we've certainly executed it, you know. While we, while we plan for something to happen like this, we didn't expect it to be for this long, that's for sure. So uh, I'm glad to hear it's going well, and I, I know we're kind of continuing to, to modify it. what's what's really the most challenging part do you think um and i'll start with you lauren what's what do you feel like is the most challenging part of, of distance learning so for me I, I think the hardest thing is that i i don't really know what's going on behind the screen uh i, I hmm. teach and lead with empathy so when i'm with my students live and in person we can have those small conversations or i can see their faces when they come into the room like mrs rinaldi was mentioning before but when they enter a live session, you know, the speaker becomes the center of attention. So mm -hmm. anything that they want to talk about, how they're feeling, what's going on, we don't get to have those moments. Um, mm -hmm. And typically when I'm in the classroom with them, I can make those adjustments. I can adjust how I deliver the curriculum. I can even just adjust the assignment itself. So it's been really hard to kind of like, on days when we don't have a live session, I'm kind of sitting there like, Hey, are you there? Like, are you guys doing okay? I, I want to email them all the time just to yeah. say what's going on. You know, is this assignment okay? Is the length okay? Um, so that's been hardest for me is to know that I, I can't step in and, and help them and fix them live like I would, you know, in the mm. classroom. Yeah, and I think it's tough too to kind of read them. I mean, we, luckily we do have video to be able to see them, but are they following? You know, it's it's hard to assess that and and kind of and their social emotional state too. You know, is right now they're they're going. I mean, we're all grieving really right now. We're grieving for what uh, a sense of loss of what we don't we don't usually have right now. And I think we've really it's really important too to make sure we are, uh, as you said, Lauren, beautifully leading with empathy, right? And I read a really excellent article over the weekend. Uh, about that, about how the the best leaders and and leaders is teacher leaders and all of us are leading with your head and your heart, and that's so important right now to have that uh, empathy uh, and compassion for our students at this time. Uh, Mrs. Rinaldi, how, what's what about for you? What's been the most challenging part? Um, again, it's the physical contact with the children. It truly is not seeing them, not praying together, not worshiping together, and going to chapel. Um, not seeing them playing together um, and just being in, in our little family classroom, in our classroom, the intimacy of just us together um, and learning from each other. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's so, I mean, it's really crucial on all grade levels, but I think about the young ones in kindergarten and what I love when I walk the hall in the morning and you all are out in the hallway and at each level, but giving those hugs, to those little sweet kindergartners as they're hanging up their backpacks on the hooks and, and starting their day, you know, all the responsive classroom uh, pieces that we do together, you know, that we're replicating as much as we can, but that's that loss of being able to, to have that physical touch in connection is what's really challenging right now. And 
I guess what's also sad is not knowing when we'll be able to do that. Even when we are able to come back, what is that going to look like? You know, it's, are there going to be certain social distancing guidelines? I, I would, I would venture to say there will be. And so that's going to even be tough, especially for a hugger like uh, you, Mrs. Rinaldi, <laughs> that loves to give those hugs to those kiddos. Uh, yeah. But I know uh, we'll, we'll adjust and modify, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly, it's, that's, that's tough. Sorry. It's, and it's hard to think that my time has been robbed from this specific group of children. Like yes. We didn't have all the time that we could have had. And that does, um, that makes me sad because yeah. we still had so much time left together to just be together. And I've been sort of cheated from that. Like we all have, but um, I'm already planning something in the future for my own little class so that we could all get together and kind of like wrap it all up when this is all over and set with. So we'll awesome. be able to be together to get, again as a unit. That's so true though. That That is the most challenging part. I think mean, this is sudden, it was so abrupt. Mm -hmm. we, on spring break. I mean, we were talking about this, people were talking about COVID and then it was just all of a sudden, boop, we're moving into this. And now we know that this is what this is for the remainder of the year. And so there was no ch sense of closure in some ways, I think too, to have that, you know, which we're, we're trying to replicate, but it is, it's certainly very challenging too. But uh, what about you, Carolina? What, what is the most challenging part of distance learning for you? Um, I would have to second what Mrs. Redondo and Mrs. Rinaldi said. Um, I became a teacher because I love kids and I love being around kids and I love interacting with kids and um, just being able to be uh, a part of their lives. So it's really hard to be a part of somebody's lives when you only see them this big on the screen. But, um, but yeah, and also there's certain things as an English teacher, for example, that um, are facilitated by one-on-one -on -one interaction. You know, like for example, writing. I teach writing, a very one-on-one. -on -one, um, I, I have a very one-on-one -on -one approach to writing. So we have conferences, and you know, they can come to my desk, and we'll talk about it, and go back, and then they can come back, and it's just a really. Um, I just I miss those moments where we can connect one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly challenging, and that's one of the subject areas I think is is challenging too in this distance learning environment is to be able to have those those moments with them. Um, it, it, but uh, you, like I said before, y'all are doing an amazing job of of finding those ways to have some one on one conversations with the kids, and I know that that's well appreciated by them. Um, so you know, we've our parents are now probably the most appreciative they've ever been of you, especially those that were <laughs> are helping to guide. Uh, some of the younger children as it relates to distance learning. Uh, and so, but how can our parents continue to support the work that you're doing? You know, I think that's, it's so crucial. We talk about the parent student uh, or the parent school partnership and how important that is to the success uh, of each child. So what are some things that parents can do to support you uh, at this time? Uh, we'll start with Mrs. Rinaldi. Okay. Um, I cannot th thank my families enough for all they have done um, with the littles, you know, they can't just go get their Chromebook and log in, you know, parents really have to try to support them and pretty much do it for them. Um, but they, they have had such open and honest communication with me. And with that open communication, this is how this can work for us when they're so little um, as an older child may reach out to a teacher and a, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but we're relying for the little ones, we're relying on the parents and the open communication has been just remarkable. It truly has been. Um, it was different, it was difficult at first, but with the longevity, um, I feel that kind of like Lauren was saying, now we know that's it, we're closed for the rest of the school year. The consistency that we have created, um, what each day should look like, what the week should look like, I feel has been huge. We're in a rhythm, we're in a routine. Um, whatever that routine looks like for your family, that's okay. Um, and we've all kind of gotten to that routine. So I feel it's, it is much, much easier now because of that consistency. Yeah, the rhythm is, I mean, one of the things I love about being, there's many, but one of which uh, I love about being at a school and in a school environment is the rhythm of the school year, right? There's a rhythm, there's a pace to it. And it that's what's been a little challenging is getting that thwarted and being in this other environment. But 
Um, I think that was one of the things we talked about even with the leadership team. If we were able to even come back, you know, for a couple of weeks or even three or four weeks in May, everybody's in such a rhythm now. It's like you'd have to then kind of readapt and, and readjust and kind of get back into that. Uh, but I, I agree. Our parents are doing an awesome job of, of supporting uh, the learning uh, with with the students down uh, at all grades. Uh, Ms. Grau, what about you? Um, yeah, I second what Mrs. Rinaldi said. I'm so grateful for the support of my parents. Um, I, Mrs. Redondo and I have, you know, classes and classes of students. So <laughs> it's really hard to sort of keep track of 80 families all at once, but I we want to. So <laughs> uh, we try our best. So I think that the what I've sort of gleaned from distance learning and just the the situation that we're in in general is that we have, to have patience with one another and mercy. Um, mm -hmm. There's so much in the world that requires our mercy and our love. And as a Christian school, I think it's so important for us to to lead with that. Um, so just you know, being patient with me, and then being, and I'll be patient with. And Anna, I I need to work. I also um, that I have to be patient as well. Sorry, I don't know why I'm not very eloquent tonight, but. Um, uh, and then also keeping that communication open, you know, asking a lot of questions. Questions are a wonderful way of creating understanding. And um, I don't mind answering emails. Um, I don't mind if um, parents want to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's fantastic, and I'm more than happy to do that. Um, but keeping that communication open is so key to being patient. So patience and communication, I think, are the best thing that parents can do for us as, as educators. Yes, I, you really hit on a good point there, the communication piece and communicating with, with care and compassion. You know, I think that's so important. And being patient with one another you know, right now, um, because we're all doing something a little bit different. The kids are learning in a different way, we're teaching in a different way, and the parents are supporting their children in a different way than what we uh, uh, had designed school to look like. So I think the compassion and care and the communication is, is, is very key. What about you, Lauren? Um, basically the same sentiment, uh, but to kind of fill in that gap that I mentioned with the challenging aspects of distance learning, just knowing that it's okay to reach out to, to the advisory teacher or to the classroom teacher about any social emotional issues or concerns going on at home. Um, you know, we in the upper school, we really, try to teach our students how to self-advocate and to let us know when they're having rough days or they have a stomach ache or whatever it might be um, to ask for a little more grace and flexibility. But because we don't see them every day, um, it, it would be great to hear from parents kind of behind the scenes to let us know, hey, you know, they're not doing so great this week. They're not feeling like school, you know, that mm -hmm. way I have an idea of why maybe the work isn't being turned in or um, you know, if they just need an extra day, um, not that we're not all trying to be flexible at this point, but uh, it helps to have that communication. And, and all of the conversations I've had with parents over the last six weeks have been really positive and enlightening for me as a teacher. Um, and it allows me to adapt my lessons, my expectations, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. No, that's so, so true. Um, not being able to have those see the physical cues right the the body language that you would see on a day-to-day -day basis you just you're trying to make some judgments on kids kind of knowing how they're feeling based on how they're reacting in a zoom or google hangout and that that's a really good point is it's so important for parents to be communicating with you all as teachers to let hey you know what my child just is not having a good day um, because you know just like we talked about earlier we all have bad days and i think right now those are probably happening more frequently than normal uh, because of all the stresses that are going on uh, in people's lives. And I've always been, I've always kind of been a big proponent of when you, uh, parents do kind of uncharacteristically will strike out towards you as a teacher or as an administrator, there's usually something else going on in their life, almost always. And yeah, I think that's probably even more true now than ever. Uh, and, and especially without the face-to-face -face communication. So, um, you know, I think that, that making sure that those lines of communication remain open is, is so crucial for us to be able to do the job of, of educating all the, all the students. So, so I'd like to wrap things up with um, final thoughts and really silver linings, because I, I do feel like there are a lot 
that we're seeing in this this time and space where we're uh, having extended periods of time with family members that we normally wouldn't have, um, maybe trying new things and or you know doing something new or different. So, what are what are some silver linings that as you see them, uh, Carolina? We'll start with you. So I have two. One, I have come to know some excellent online programs that I probably wouldn't have used before, just because I like I'm a creature of habit, so I like to do certain things certain ways. Um, but I've sort of discovered a lot of really cool things that um, and, and methods of delivering information that I'm going to use definitely even in the brick and mortar, mortar school setting. And then mm -hmm. also snail mail. <laughs> so I've sort of taken to sending my students, especially my advisory students, mail um, uh, some stickers and little notes of encouragement and happy birthday notes and things like that because I can't give it to them in person. So um, it's been a long time since I've written a letter and sent it using a stamp and I was very excited that I had stamps. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so th those are the two things that I don't know. Right now I'm just very excited about sending mail and being able to use these platforms. Definitely, I, the platforms for sure will continue on in um, when we get back to a face-to-face -face environment. Uh, it was a lot of learning that's happening there, and I agree with you on the sending the notes too. I know, being a parent uh, for a moment, getting something in the mail like our kids like eyes light up because they just we just don't do that anymore. And also, I think communicating uh, in that regard because it really cuts through the noise, like snail mail and oh, I don't know, a phone call, like an actual phone <laughs> phone call, like an old-fashioned phone call. Um, I've received and, and uh, had more phone calls, made more phone calls than normal, uh, just to kind of cut through the noise and, and do something in a different way with communication. So uh, what about you, Mrs. Rinaldi? What are some silver linings? Um, I think that the phrase, it takes a village, is truly, truly um, very powerful right now. It does take a village to get through this. And um, if it if it wouldn't be for the daily presence of my my students, the support of my families, um, the administration team, the kindergarten team, um, Miss Honor, Miss Kamenak, Miss Sarah Cox, that we're constantly all day long touching base with each other, making sure that everything's going smoothly in their day, um, and even other colleagues that you reach out to now more so than maybe when we were in the building, um, wouldn't necessarily go up to the upper school, but maybe I have contact more with, you know, a teacher just to check in to see how they're doing. Um, so the silver lining for me is that I feel it's a very powerful environment um, for myself as a teacher, for my students, for my families, for my own son and daughter and our family. Um, it, it truly is a, a sense of comfort um, to know that we are all supporting each other. And I humbly, humbly, humbly thank everyone because it really is the whole entire village working together to make this work. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, one of my favorite things each week is when we have our Tuesday afternoon meetings and I get to see at least everyone's face, you know, on our Zoom call, all of our teachers together and um, and we're, hopefully we're doing some things to try to break up the, the typical meeting where we've done some name that baby night uh, contests and, and trivia and, and really trying to, again, just uh, just keep the community together and tied together in a fun way. And I appreciate everyone's <laughs> support and, uh, and hearing me with some of these different ideas to try to, to keep the conversation going. And it's also even kind of fun, too, just to see people in their own environment, you know, that we don't, you know, it'd be really challenging to go to every single person's house. You know, but it's kind of fun to even see like your backdrop and and see what your your house you know, looks like and, and what and what you kind of how you decorate to really make things your home. You know, for for the school uh, for the for the for the uh, your classroom from home, I should say. Ms. Redonda, what about you? What are some silver linings? Um, so I have three silver linings. The first is kind of similar to Miss Grouse and just finding um, creative ways to connect with students. So, you know, noticing the poster they have hanging in the background, uh, of their live session or sending out a birthday card. Um, we've even resorted to using like on a scale of baby Yoda expressions, how are <laughs> feeling today? <laughs> and, you know, that gives me an idea of their social emotional needs. Um, yep. so that's been really fun. 
Uh, the second one is uh, more academically based, so just recognizing maybe how I can be a more efficient teacher, um, you know, being able to deliver something in five or 10 minutes on a screencastify video as opposed to a 45 minute lesson. That's gonna make me a much more efficient teacher when we do get back to the classroom um, and really be able to critically look at the curriculum, look at what needs to be taught, how it needs to be taught, you know, what can be thrown out um, or delivered in a more creative way. And that, that's been really freeing through this whole process. Um, and the last one is that we're finally going to finish unpacking our house after nearly two years. <laughs> we have like five boxes left. <laughs> Good for you. Yes, I know. I've done more around the house in the last couple of months than since I moved in here. I think we've cleaned about every room, planted flowers. Uh, so it's, it's you try to, uh, it, there are a lot of silver linings in that regard too, but um, yeah, you're right. And how you deliver the curriculum, which you touched on that from the academic standpoint too, that's that second stage that we talked about or earlier, the adaptation stage is, is as you deliver it and, and things that you can take away uh, from this to take back to the bricks and mortar uh, uh, campus. So, well, awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being with me tonight, spending your Sunday evening on the Lanai. I really appreciate uh, the time you spent in the conversation, uh, so thoughtful. Um, and, I, you know, just, it was, it was great, great spending time with you. Also, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for being here. So, next Sunday, we will have our, we would have had our Arts Day next Saturday, our first Arts Day. So, in lieu of that, we are going to have three members of our fine arts department who will be uh, here and they're looking forward to getting to know you or performing in fine arts. So, you'll have uh, Mrs. D, Dr. Will, and Mrs. Martin will be here. And we're really looking forward to a conversation centered around the arts and the importance of the arts. And so you don't want to miss that at all. So with that, I am Mr. Chapman, your head of school and signing off, I'm asking you to wash your hands, practice social distancing, but more importantly, show compassion and care to those around you. Nice for life. Take care.